fish now. 866-941-6887. 866-941-NUTS. It's that time of day on a Friday. Ah, Friday. Now, listen. I'm so excited. Here's the deal. You go to ConnieandFish.com. You choose either station you want. You can go up there. You can get all the information on Cabo because we want you to go. It's going to be a fun time. <laughs> all right. Now, Mike Conway, one of our coworkers, is in the studio with us right now. And, Mike, I don't it. want you. I, Mike, you saw Paranormal Activity last weekend. I did, yeah. I don't want you to say anything about what you thought until we discuss that with Willie. Okay. Because I want to hear what he says first. You should first. see the emails we've gotten, too. Really? Yeah, they're interesting. Hmm. I want to see what Willie says first. Well, because he's the professional. Right. Yeah. I'm just the layman. Willie <laughs> is that. Uh, yeah. Uh, all right. So here we go. Let's all go to the movie. Let's all go. This week might be a little warm, but this week is a little chilly. On the phone with a rapid machine, we call him the Waffle of Willie. Hi, Willie. I heard you guys got the swine flu. We uh, have colds, but yeah. it's not no, 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 the swine flu. No, 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 you have to play this, okay? What? Do you want the publicity? Do you want the attention? <laughs> Morning show <laughs> gets swine flu together? Swine flu. No, we're going to get swine flu, and then we're going to make a big balloon and go float away in it. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're going to put a boy in a balloon and just let it go. <laughs> no, we're going to put us in there. Oh, okay. I think that's what but we I should mean, do. It's just ridiculous. I mean, every every idiot who gets the swine flu gets this big story. I was reading this story like some girl from The Bachelor got the swine flu. I'm like, okay, we are really reaching now. <laughs> Everybody's getting it. I actually, uh, we have a really good friend of the show whose uh, kid actually isn't doing too good today because of that. Sucks. Yeah. So let's, with the movies today, Willie, let's start with the very important and end with the very important, which means law-abiding citizen is in the middle. Really okay. in the middle? Okay. okay. Wait, what's the, what's the... Where the wild things are. You want to start with that? Yeah. That's going to be the biggest movie of the weekend. That's very important. So let's All talk right. about that one. Well, I think the problem with where the wild things are is that, you know, it wants to be this kind of magical, mysterious, kind of dangerous movie, but it doesn't have the story to make it happen. So you you, you get, like, these great costumes. I mean, I love how all the monsters are actually wearing uh, Jim Henson uh, Muppet costumes rather than being computer generated. I just think it makes it feel more real. Uh-huh. Uh, but, you know, and I love the music. I mean, the music does kind of, you know, sound like a kid's choir, and it gives the movie this kind of, you know, almost childlike kind of fantasy feel. But there's nothing to make you pay attention. I mean, yeah, I'm going to giggle every time, you know, James Gandolfini speaks because it sounds like Tony Soprano is going to put a whack out on the little kid. Yeah. But, you know, it, just, it, it isn't going anywhere. Really? Now, this is, a, this is supposed to be the big one this weekend, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And, and I want it to be better. I think it, it's like a bad movie that has a lot of good things going for it. Now, wait, Willie, did you read the, the book? As a kid? No. No, you did not. Okay, because okay, a lot of people that listen to our show have read that book, and uh, they're all excited about it. Okay, so what'd you give it out of four? Or waffles? they're very, or they're very angry because they don't want these Hollywood hucksters to ruin their childhood memory. Uh oh, that's not good. What'd you give it? Well, I'm going one and a half waffles. Oh, wow. snap! Wow, out of four. That yeah, is well, not go good. ahead, Mike. This is Mike. Willie, say hi to Mike. Hi, Mike. Hey, what's going on, Willie? I, I had plans to see where the wild things are tonight in the IMAX, though. Is that going to make a difference? Uh, you know, I think you'll 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 kind of enjoy the artistry of it more on the IMAX because it is a movie that looks really cool, and and there are going to be scenes in the movie that are going to blow you away on an IMAX as they go across this desert, as they they kind of have some of these wild rumpus times. I think that's going to look really good in IMAX. All right, so like a nine year old kid that I may be taking with me, a friend's kid. What are you? Yeah, right. right. What are you? Give me a break. You are nine year old kid. You how old are you, Mike? <laughs> I just turned 25. Yeah, Mike is not yeah. taking a okay. nine-year-old okay. Okay. All right, Willie, law-abiding citizen, what do you think of that? Uh, you know, absurd is not a strong enough word to describe Really? Really? Yeah, no, you need to start using adjectives usually thrown at me by former girlfriends. We're talking about words. <laughs> wow. Nonsensical, ludicrous, preposterous. It's just it's uh, a crazy movie. I mean, yes, it's a movie, so it, it shouldn't have to make total sense, and it shouldn't be totally believable. But, I mean, the, the plot that this guy comes up with couldn't be carried out by the KGB or the CIA. Really? And Jamie Foxx is in it and Gerard Butler. Yeah, and you know, Gerard Butler is this guy who's really angry because his wife and child were murdered, and Jamie Foxx is the assistant district attorney who cut a deal with one of the killers, and now Gerard Butler is going to get revenge on everybody. Yeah, it does All look right. kind of stupid, so... What'd you give Law Abiding Citizen? Half a waffle. Oh my God, I hope that Paranormal Activity, you don't have as bad of a uh, review for that. Well, okay, should I read the emails before we get his review? Because we've got some interesting emails. No, let's get his review first. 
I don't want to sway his opinion at all. Okay, let's hear what he says. What did you think? Paranormal activity. I think it'll scare your pants off. Really? Yeah, I liked it. I mean, and the, the problem, though, with the movie is that, you know, now we're kind of in that second wave of viewers. Like, I could see where if you had seen it a couple of weeks ago at some midnight show and you didn't have any idea what to expect, it would be a little bit scarier. Right, yeah. But I still think it works really well here. You know, just simply because I think the director does a great job escalating all the danger and all the tension and just is daring you to find the ghosts in this movie. You know, I mean, the, the whole idea that it's, a, you know, kind of this recovered video footage, kind of like the Blair Witch project Mm -hmm. this young couple put up video cameras all around their house because they wanted to become ghost hunters to find out what was going bump in the night and the one that really gets you is there's this constant kind of you know looking at their bed and the open door near their bedroom and it's like the director is daring you to see a shadow walk across the room or see some light turn on or or see the door close or anything and that's what keeps you on the edge of your seat because you're always waiting for something scary to happen Wow. wow now what did you give it out of four waffles Three and a half waffles. Three wow. and a half. Okay, let me, before Mike, before you say anything, let me read you some of the emails, Willie, that we've received about this, okay? Okay. Uh, I went and watched the first night it came out in uh, Madison. Uh, honestly, this movie was a huge disappointment after hearing how scary it was. Don't waste your money. Here's another one that says, I must be broken. I love scary movies, but I giggled all the way through this one. Really? Another one says, are you kidding me? It wasn't that scary at all. Uh, it just made you wonder if things are like that Like that actually happened, RE Paranormal Activity. Connie, it's, very, it's not scary. I love a good scary movie. I was kind of disappointed. Most of the movie's boring. You should just rent it. Really? Yeah. Mike Conway, what did you think? Well, there's. I do agree with Willie. Like the whole time, you're set up the whole movie, but you're like X number of minutes in, and you feel like nothing's happened. They haven't given you anything, and I kind of felt like the characters were unbelievable. A either that, or they have a really dysfunctional relationship. They're supposed to be boyfriend <laughs> and girlfriend, yeah. and I really didn't feel like that at all. Uh, you compare it to like the Blair Witch Project, and uh, you know that felt real because it's like real people doing a real thing. This was kind of like. There's a whole backstory that nobody really knows about. Did you, you ever find out about the backstory? Uh, well, they do allude to it, uh, like uh, the the girl's childhood. Apparently, this. Well, I don't want to give too much yeah, away. But, yeah. Um, but uh, I mean, you're so. You do find out kind of why they're being, why there is paranormal activity, so to speak, in their bedroom. But there's a whole lot of nothing going on until basically the very end. There's no like falling action. There's this big climax right at the end, and basically a black screen. Hmm. And did I, did, Willie, did he like, just give away too much just then? No, because, you know, there's still a lot of surprises in there. There is. Yeah, and, and yeah, I think you get some satisfaction after uh, watching the guy get haunted because, you know, his name is Mika, and with that kind of pretension, you're just begging to be haunted. <laughs> we got a text that says, I saw it a few weeks ago. I don't get scared easy, but it's really good, I thought. Everything in the national media that I've seen all over CNN and Fox and everything, them talking to people coming out of theaters, they're all talking about how it's the scariest movie they've ever seen. And well, these are adults. What you're getting with those emails is you're getting people, like I said, in that second wave yeah. who are expecting something absolutely positively amazing beyond belief. And that's just not possible. That sucks. And the yeah. last 20 minutes is the best? Oh, I thought, yeah, I mean, I, I like kind of like the, the little middle section. I, I don't want to give away what happens, but okay. there's a really cool thing that happens that shocked me because I didn't see that coming. Do you know what he's talking about, Mike? Uh, yeah, I, well, there's a couple different things, but yeah, I do think I know what he's talking about. I do want to say that I saw it before it was open nationwide. I saw it last weekend. Okay. We drove from Milwaukee to Madison to see it yep. and left disappointed. I think that may have had something to do with the hour drive between Milwaukee and Madison. Really? And a little bit so? of disappointment. I think that, or maybe Maybe it was the company. <laughs> Maybe they, we did have a packed thing. Yeah, right there. It could be the people you're hanging out with. Maybe they just suck. Uh, that too. Maybe. So out of knows? four waffles, what would you have given it, Mike? Uh, maybe like a, a two because it was scary, but it didn't live up to the hype for at least my perspective. Okay. Willie, All what right. do you got for now for us on tap for next week, my friend? Well, you, you got Hillary Swank and Amelia. You've got Astro Boy and uh, what, oh, uh, Cirque du Freak, the vampire's assistant. Oh, God. Oh, hey, my God. What the crap is Astro Boy? <laughs> yeah, Astro Boy. Well, yeah, <laughs> Wait. It right there. Let me just put it this way. Nicolas Cage does one of the voices. That's uh, it's a cartoon, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's a cartoon. <laughs> is it a naughty cartoon? Naughty. No, not Astro before. Boy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike, are you dressing up as that for Halloween? <laughs> that was a secret. You would be yeah, a very... Yeah. I think you should be one of the monsters and one of the wild things. There, so. yeah, yeah, there you go, there you go, yeah. <laughs> All right, Willie, have a good week, darling.
All right, we'll talk to you next week. Bye. Later, brother. Wafflemovies.com if you ever want to see Willie's uh, critiques. Of course, he's on the regulars page of countingandfish.com. He's along with Steve Eisenberg, enjoying the coffee psychic, everybody else. Paranormal Activity gave it three and a half. Law-abiding citizen, uh, citizen, a half a waffle, and where the wild things are, one and a half out of four. Thanks for stopping by, sense. Mike. Uh, we're going to do an email. Okay. Call Connie and Fish now at 866-941-NUTS or send them an email at email at connieandfish.com. First, though, we have to do traffic, and Mike Conway's got it. He's not in the Boucher Kia Traffic <laughs> Center because he's in our studio right now. Dun, da, da, da. Dun, if you're going da, da. eastbound 94, it's still a little bit crowded between the zoo interchange and downtown. Also backed up westbound 94 because of an earlier accident right around 25th Street. So you might find some brake lights between downtown and the Mitchell Boulevard area. And there's always a real-time map on our website, 97.3thebrew.com, keyword traffic. Thank you, Mike. Say good.